Another grounded quick guide today with the laboratory in the haze. It's a pretty dangerous area to get to. I've got a more detailed overall haze ultimate guide to go and check out if you want more tips on getting everything available in the trenches, how to turn the gas off and more. But right now, just a short version on what you can get, what you can unlock and my preferred way to get inside. Let's go. So bring the following with you, a weevil mask, make sure it's fully repaired. The gill tube or the diving helmet, the bubble helmet a tier 2 axe and a tier 2 knife, the bone knife. You won't necessarily need lots of food or water. You could go to the trouble of making mint arrows, but otherwise I would say just bring a decent club with you. The super burgle chip that you get will unlock the oven and that's going to help you make the mushroom pieces so you could go ahead and start base building. I would say the haze is the third laboratory you want to do after the hedge and then the pond, but there is still kind of a gate in the process as you won't be able to get the charcoal pieces until maybe you get antlion armor later. See, I've picked up this sad stab scab and that's where you want to head over to the cassette tape, which you'll find towards the southwest of the map, just past the haze area. But it also gives you a good indication of where to go because you're going to go across the steps over to the exposed pipe. This is just between the big mega sandbox and the slab stairs. So this is where you want to equip the Murty mutation if you got it while exploring the pond. And you can technically maybe do this without some breathing apparatus, but I do think it's recommended you have something. Probably a good idea to bring a slime lantern with you, or at least make some slime torches, at least four or five to get through the water. And yeah, this is where you're going to get your bone dagger out. Obviously make sure you still bring in your gas mask as you'll need it to make your escape and you won't need any bombs. You can go through a different entrance that's deep in the haze and you can blow up the doorway. But this way you are also getting milk motors and more goodies and I think it's an easy way to do it believe it or not. You mostly avoid all the infected creatures and you can simply just jump in the water as long as you don't mind swimming in close places. Once you're in there it only branches off in one extra direction and this is where you're going to find a mega milk motor. So take care of the water fleas, these are actually really good because they'll give you food and water and you can eat them raw. You don't get much so you might as well consume them while you're on your adventures. But yeah, take the right hand side pipe and keep swimming down. You won't have to worry about any exploding nodules from the infection but you will have to cut through some of the soggy vines. That's probably the one exception, you need to make sure your tier 2 bone knife is well repaired so you don't break on you as you're completing it. There's quite a few of these guys in here, they won't generally give you too much trouble, I was pretty much just going wild on them here and I'm sure you could be a bit more careful if you're worried about your health. The haze is meant to be the third major laboratory that you complete after taking care of the hedge and then going through obviously the pond. Look out for some tough nuggets on the floor here and keep swimming through and you'll come across a diving bell spider. This is where if you don't have the best breathing gear you can use this to your advantage as you will get oxygen for killing them. Keep swimming, hack away through the soggy ropes and you'll get a 500 raw science and a mega milk. Not to mention this scab which is sewage. Lovely luminous green. Once you swim back to the junction you can get some more air up top and then it's on to the next stage. Now this will be a bit more dangerous as there's quite a few of the diving bell spiders here and here. Hack through and then sweep past them. In fact you might as well just try and actually sneak past them completely if you do come across them. They will be pretty close to another soggy wall that you might have them come and attack you while trying to hack it down. But as long as you're really quick you should be able to get through without them giving you too much trouble. Once this is done, you're pretty much inside the haze laboratory. So now there's going to be a bunch of the infected weevils that explode and they'll come chasing at you. But actually you can pretty much have them explode and not do too much damage to you as they won't follow you all the way to the water's edge normally. Fire a few arrows at them, why not? And then see if you can get a couple of their attentions. Let them explode and do their thing and you're good as gold. Just keep letting them kill themselves and you can go and explore. At this point you are going to need your tier 2 axe as we're going to have to destroy the exploding clumps. Always aim for the black ones with the white pimples first and then take care of the other more luminescent white ones afterwards once you've cleared them all out. You'll get plenty of fungal growth from this so you can now carry on starting to make more grenades and bombs. Now we'll be taking on a few Taze T's so you need to make sure you've got a decent weapon like either the ant club or certainly something that does smashing damage. Activate the biometric scanner and go ahead and take care of the one that will pop out. To the left of the entranceway there is 500 raw science so make sure you pick that up. And then you want to actually hop over the laboratory to the right hand side to pick up another 500 raw science. 
Once that's done, you can go inside the laboratory. To the left is the main entrance that you'll actually come through from the actual haze itself. So you can go all the way up if you want and get some more loot. There should be a whole ton of tough rock inside a chest, as well as some more story, as well as another scanner. And just at the back on the shelving, there should be some more style and tough nuggets. Not to mention some bandages. You can then activate the doorway, but you still won't be able to get out as you still need a grenade to actually blow the door open. But we'll get to that at the end as that can be opened once we've cleared out the rest of the Hayes lab. If you head back to the junction and take the right hand side, there'll be a story cassette tape inside the phase one window. And you can see the progress that gets made from the mushrooms being mutated. And inside the doorway, you have a whole bunch of fungal growths. So these can be pretty challenging. You want to aim for the ones obviously closest to you and take them out and look out for any sneaky ones that are growing in the wall. You really do have to aim upwards to really hit them if they're on the wall. And the one in the middle is hiding behind some glass. So clear out all the ones around the outside before attempting to take it on as the glass might block it. Once you've completed all of it and sorted it out, you can then use the biometric scanner to gain access to the switch that you need that will open up the doorway in the second part of the Hayes laboratory. For some reason you don't get any of the growth in this room as opposed to the stuff that you do get outside, so it's not even worth really going ahead and harvesting any of it. Go ahead and press the button and inside again you'll find some more food, another few tough nuggets and the switch plus another chest filled with style and tough nuggets. So head back towards the water where you came in and you should have noticed there is another direction that you can actually go inside the water. You should have a doorway to the left that would now be able to be opened as previously it was shut because you didn't have the switch on. You still have to use your hand on the biometric scanner and you get another piece of the law. Now depending on the difficulty of the game, inside you'll find much bigger challenges. If you're playing on your own, doing it relatively early, you'll probably only find a ladybug and some infected mites. If you're playing multiplayer or you've got it on woe mode, you may even find infected larvae in here as well. And you can't really cheese as much as you used to be able to do. As soon as you step into the room, and you will be trapped in here with the infected creatures. I prefer using the club and even though there's lots of explosions going off it doesn't have to be as challenging as you think it would. One thing I would suggest though is taking care of the infected mites first and then taking on the actual ladybug itself. It might also be a good idea to hack away at any of the growths that are growing in and around the area too and then this reduces the chance of getting accidentally blown up. Now you might be thinking you could apply some mints to feather arrows and that could be a good method to take them out but really it's probably just better off like I said running around being cautious of where them little bombs are going off and just keep your distance kiting any of the other small creatures or taking out the growths. I used to find this fight incredibly tough and I would cheese, I would make the creatures come out the doorway and I would just kill them with loads of bows and arrows. But obviously since they've made that change now, you can't do it, so it's made it good and it's got me a little bit more involved in combat, melee combat at least anyway. Be careful for some of the growths are still locked in the gra glass so it can be a bit tough breaking them down, but otherwise just keep distance, make sure you've got plenty of stamina and healing, you will definitely need some sort of fast healing items, either the granola bars or at least some sort of smoothies. And I'm going for the perfect parry system here, I've got the Koi armor which gives that extra window and I've got some decent mutations like Coupe de Gras to do some more extra damage. Keep whittling away, look out for the ladybug that will do a regular melee attack on you occasionally as well and obviously the one where she throws all of her, her grenades and eventually you will be able to take her down fairly simply. Just parry from that original block and you should be easily getting in 3 or 4 hits. Once you've killed it you should get the truffle tussle mutation which gives you a random chance of causing explosions when you are fighting not holding any weapons basically your fists become little mini explosions or you have a chance of it. But it's still a bit more difficult as you, once you press the biometric scanner to get to the next part, you've got a whole ton of these infected mites. They can be a bit of a challenge to heal. At least one of them's gonna take maybe seven swipes of an ax. So keep going ahead. They will slow you down sometimes with this and it can cause a lot of damage if you're not paying enough attention. But eventually you'll clear them out, I was using my slowly small upgraded tier 2 axe which was only like level 1 or 2. And then you're in the main control chamber, some more story here just in front of the screens. Then you've got the super burgle chip and you've got some of the grenades. Also plenty of granola bars to help you heal too. 
You're going to use one of these grenades to get through the doorway out and then you're going to save one of them for the spade that gets you onto the picnic table a little later and you'll save the other grenade for taking care of the rock underneath the oak tree. Just worth paying that in mind. With the burgle chip picked up, that's it. You can literally leave. Now you could go back the way you came through the watery tunnels, but otherwise, like I said, I prefer it just to go out the main door. And don't forget to pick up that tough nugget that's on the floor there as well. So back up at the doorway, throw your grenade, it'll blow open the door, and now you just gotta put your haze mask on so that you can run through. And it might be a chance that you've already got yourself a tier two spade made out of black ant parts, and that's what you're gonna to need to get the gum to turn off the haze. If you check out my ultimate guide i'll include everything you need to know about the trenches and the hallways area as well as how to turn the haze off but this one has really just been about exploring the haze laboratory so back to burgle and what do you get for complete in the haze laboratory well obviously the main thing is them advanced buildings so you'll get the oven mushroom slurry and mushroom bricks so you can now craft the next tier of building to keep your base relatively safe from other creatures and make it look a bit nicer like a proper castle. It is 2,500 raw science, then after that you've got your choice out of things like the feather roofs for 2,500, you also get the cookbook haze for 3,500 which gives you extra critical hit chance with the lavagna and then gazpacho soup is going to give you extra attack damage. You also get the pebble turret and the sign set daydream. So onwards to part two, let's go. Like I mentioned earlier, you do get the oven, but you don't get the ability to craft one until you get the charcoal pieces, which means you have to pretty much more or less complete the sandbox. I'm predicting 1.0 might have a little bit of an easier way to get some charcoal pieces, otherwise it is a bit of a weird mix. So if anything changes, of course, I'll let you guys know in a fresh brand new guide, but that should be all the changes that we've had up until 1.0 basically the guide to the lab. Hope you found that useful. Check out all the rest of my guides and I'll be there for every step of the way 1.0. Every new creature, bug, new area and more. Until next time, Rat Bags, laters.